Welcome back to the Google Ads Lead Gen Show. My name is Michelle Kopp from Level 28 Media. Uh, my name is Dean Hua with Sachi Studio. And in today's episode, we're going to be talking all about SMMA or social media marketing or agency scam artists and gurus. Mm. Um, so if you are looking and doing your due diligence and research right now to find a guru or someone to follow, I, we really want to have you stop and, and listen and watch this video because it's going to be really important um, because we have some insights that we have to share from being in this industry for so long and also doing our own research on social media marketing and agency scam artists. So we want to go ahead and dive in, Dean. Uh, so question, what, I'd be interested, what was the catalyst for you suggesting this uh, particular topic? So for me, the catalyst was that um, I actually, so you know my background, I started my own agency in 2020, and I was actually looking for resources myself for a coach or for someone to follow um, in terms of someone to like guide me, because I felt like there was just so many different paths I can go down. and you know, as being a business owner, it's really hard to stay focused. Um, so I, I went, I went to Instagram and I found some of these gurus and, you know, they look like these 20 year old kids, they're wearing hoodies and <laughs> name, name, name some of these gurus unpolished. Uh, so, and, and by naming these gurus, I'm not trying to, you know, spread any hate or anything, but these are just the people that I've seen. So yeah. Alex Hermosi, Joel Kaplan, Iman Godzi, and Ty Lopez. Those are some of the bigger names. I don't know. Are there any other ones that come to mind? Oh, uh, there are tons. I, I would say Ty. I mean, obviously everyone knows Ty's reputation. Uh, I, I would definitely characterize him as a, I guess, OG guru, if you will. He's like the, the guru of all gurus. Uh, you know, it's funny you mentioned Iman. Um, I followed Iman from like day one, from six years ago when I landed upon one of his videos, which was actually a really good video on how he was landing Facebook ad, Facebook ad clients. Um, and it's interesting to see his progress from at that time. He was very, he was a very genuine, authentic, um, you know, content creator, if you will. And yeah. to see where he is now, where quite frankly, it, there's a lot of fluff built around his brand. He's, he makes a lot of money. Uh, that's for sure. Um, so yeah, I would definitely categorize him on, uh, Joe, he's definitely getting there again. I, I have a couple of friends who've taken Joe Kaplan's, um, SMA, uh, course, of course. I think yeah. you're paying 10 K give or take, um, both of them said nothing but good things about it. Although I recently I've heard a lot of generic things about him as well as he's tried to scale. I was highly considering taking his course until I heard that it was $10,000. Yeah. Um, but, and here's the thing they, he, his sales team uses really hard sales tactics in order oh, to okay. lure you in, um, get you in for an appointment. And then what they'll do is, oh, it's $10,000, but you don't have to pay it all up front. You can, you can split the payments. It's going to be easy, blah, blah, blah. So I'm not saying that these guys are necessarily scam artists. I, I think that like someone like Joel, a lot of these guys, when they start out, they have that genuine interest of like, you know, they actually went through this path, perhaps um, there's no way to fully verify. A lot of times they'll use like their Stripe accounts and like show off like, oh, this is how much money I made. Um, so you have to take it with a grain of salt because anything you see on the Internet can just be a bunch of fluff. And we all know you can use Canva or Photoshop to just like fake the numbers. Um, but I think a lot of times what they start out with genuine intentions and then once they see the money start coming in, then they start moving into this whole coaching uh, guru type of uh, influencer role where then they ditch the agency that they started and then they end up starting their own coaching company where they're charging thousands of dollars. Yeah, I, I found like part of the reason why people do that where they've achieved success within their niche and now they want to kind of like teach other people how to be successful. I think part of the reason why people do that is just because it scales a lot easier. It is um, it's one yeah. to many versus one to one. Exactly. And that's what everyone's doing to some degree. Some people just want to sell digital products. Other people want to sell courses. That's a really big thing nowadays. Um, so I totally get it. But I think what people don't understand is that 
just because they've had success within their niche doesn't necessarily mean you have success as well, regardless of what they promise. Exactly. And I think one of the things too, is I think the whole SMMA social media marketing or agency in a box is not really realistic uh, to, to think that, oh, I'm going to buy this course for nine ninety seven or nineteen ninety seven with a 30 day guarantee. And um, I'm going to learn everything I need to know to start a six figure SMMA. And within, you know, 90 days, I'm going to be at 10 K months. Um, realistically, it's, it's very unlikely, um, unless you have the skills already, but a lot of times they're just pitching to, um, what, uh, teenagers or college students that may have a savings, um, and then try to get them to buy the course. And then once they realize, once they're in the course and they realize that they've gone far deep into the course where they can't get the the refund. Um, and they realize like, Oh shoot, you're telling me I have to cold email and cold call. I cannot do that. You know? And then they realize how hard it is and they just give up and here they just spent one to $2,000 on a course from a guru. So I don't know if you have any other thoughts on this. Yeah. It's really funny how the prime demographic for these people are generally young men in their twenties. And I thought about why that is. And I think partly because if you think about young men in their 20s, I know I'm I'm generalizing to some degree, um, but I do believe this to be true. Uh, young men in their 20s, they want a few things. Number one, women. Number two, more money. Number three, <laughs> cars. And, you know, what does that, how is that usually promoted in, in, in these courses? Probably the same method, although I don't think a lot of these gurus are, are teaching you how to make more money just so you get more women, but they definitely show off the Rolexes, the Lambos, things like that. Um, Not to sit there and say women don't necessarily um, fall for it as well. I think they do. I I, I just think women aren't susceptible to the same messaging that young men are. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. And then on top of that, they see these guys like Joel, Iman, and Ty that just dress super casually, they look just like you, right? So you see that and you're like, wow, they're just like me. I can totally do this. Um, So it's relatable versus if it was like a guy that was like super polished, like let's say like Simon Sinek or like some really, you you know where I'm going with this. Like it's not relatable versus these younger, you know, in their you know, later 20s or maybe even early 30s um, trying to, you know, lure these younger kids in. Yeah, they, they don't they don't have a lot of real life experience or real life business experience. So they're very easily impressionable. Exactly. So, exactly. Yeah. Um, so let's talk about how do you spot these gurus um, on the internet as you're scrolling through Instagram or TikTok? What are some what are some things that really stick out to you and how do you how do you spot them? Well, I think number one, it always starts with an ad, right? Like usually most of these gurus, they, they start with an ad and you have to spot the, in order to spot a good ad, you have to spot, spot the headline. So usually the headline is very simplistic where it's promising really big results. For example, uh, one headline could be, here's how we uh, made $90,000 in revenue in 30 months or in 30 days. 30 days. Mm-hmm. Right. Or here's how we grew our agency to $100,000 in ARR in the next three months. So they promise big results and then they lead in to most likely what's going to be a lead magnet. So download this free PDF or spend 19 bucks to buy this ebook. And what ends up happening during the process is when you download the lead magnet or you spend just a few dollars on uh, an ebook or a course is that's where they start to up that you don't really make a lot of money off of $19, even if you're working at volume. Generally speaking, you're probably breaking even um, to mm-hmm. try the ad costs. Um, but where they get you is they get you through the upsell. So you just spend 20 bucks. If you just spend 20 bucks, you're more than likely eager to spend maybe another 100 bucks on maybe you know whatever else that they're selling, like a little mini course. And then so once you spend a hundred bucks, then maybe 30 days later, they'll drip out a campaign to get you to start spending uh, several thousand dollars. That's generally how it works. And that's kind of how they 
they they get you in. Mm -hmm. So something else that I've seen too is a lot of times they'll put out content about, yeah, so it's all about this is how you make X amount of dollars. This is how you win this many clients. This is the freedom that you're going to be able to get if you, you know, this is the lifestyle that you could get if, if you start your own social media marketing agency or agency in general, if you listen to me. Um, and a lot of times, uh, yeah, they're promoting how much money you could make. And then what they'll do is beyond, I, so I've seen that type of funnel, but then I've, I've also seen funnels where they just send you to their Calendly and they're like, Hey, book an appointment, book an appointment with me. And they get a really hard sales closer to get on the phone. So typically it's not going to be the guru that's going to get on. They don't have time for you. <laughs> They've trained a salesperson. That's a really, um, that's a really hard closer. That's going to get you to try to sign up, uh, for the services. So they'll try to book you and they'll say something along the lines of like, here, get a free test drive or get a free consultation. Um, but you know that it's, you know, things are not always free. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you know that their goal is just is to get you in so that they can get your credit card information and start charging you. So that's pretty much, you know, another way that I've seen them go about um, you know, a way to to notice these these scams. Um, and then a lot of times they'll show off their like click funnel awards. I don't know if you've seen that. Like in the background. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. In the background, um, or as a part of the ad, they're like, Oh, look, we generated like, you know, t uh, 10 figure, you know, eight figures of, you know, revenue from just one funnel. OMG. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, you know, and we all know how, how long that particular tactic has been around and yet it still works it still works because they're, they're, they're actually more successful now with like the younger generation. Mm. Um, so the younger generation of like the 20 year olds now born in the two thousands are not, you know, as aware of these awards and stuff like that versus people like you and me who've been in the game yeah. for a while. Um, I have a question for you about this whole agency in a box or SMMA do you think that it's possible to be successful in it? Like what percentage of um, people do you think that go through these programs actually find success? Um, so I don't have exact data, but if I had to take a guess, very a very small minority, I would say maybe, I don't know, less than 10%, maybe less than 5%. Um, so for, for every 10 people who go through those courses, only one could probably be successful and I define success as being able to have a sustainable agency that lasts more than a year. Everyone else yeah. kind of goes out of business. Um, and I think there's a lot of factors involved. Obviously you can put some of the burden on the course seller himself for selling, you know, something that's very, or that doesn't have a lot of substance, but also um, experience. A lot of these people who buy these courses or take up these masterminds, they don't have a lot of business experience. They don't have experience running an agency, obviously. Um, they don't have experience mm -hmm. uh, interfacing with clients, which obviously you need when you're running an agency. And a lot of them don't necessarily have a lot of marketing knowledge. Maybe they spent mm -hmm. a year working at an agency or maybe they're in-house somewhere and then now they're being promised that they can now run their own agency in a box within 90 days. So I think once you take in all those factors, I, that's how I arrived at less than 10% of people succeeding. Yeah, I wanted to take a few minutes to break down like the the issues with agency in a box or SMMA. So the first thing is what they teach in a lot of these courses is agency arbitrage. So essentially what that is, is um, what you're doing is you're not actually doing the work as actually like fulfillment. You're outsourcing it to other freelancers that are actually doing the fulfillment. And while there's nothing necessarily wrong with that, because you and I, we talk about white label um, in our in our podcast episodes as well. And we both of us have uh, strong opinions about it, uh, but we don't necessarily think that there's anything wrong with it. It's just important to be transparent about it. But I think what it comes down to is with this whole agency arbitrage, it's actually really hard to find good freelancers that can deliver, that are cheap, so that you can still have a margin, right? So I think that that's, that's one of the big issues. And a lot of times then you're outsourcing it to someone overseas, Philippines or India, they're in a different time zone. 
Um, a lot of times they may not be reliable. So then they end up um, burning and churning through clients. And that's a really big issue that I wanted to address. It's the whole agency arbitrage thing. It can work, but most of the time it doesn't. Um, another, or do you have any thoughts on that? No, I, I think you hit the nail on the head. Like people don't understand how hard it is to find good freelancers or contractors, regardless if it's overseas or here in the U.S. Um, there's only so many uh, talented people or talented marketers out there, regardless if it's Facebook ads, Google ads, SEO, or whatever. Um, there's only so much good talent out there, and you have to remember that good talent comes at a price. And that exactly. price often will or may well probably will eat into your profits as well. So ideally what you're looking for as a social media marketing agency owner is trying to find someone who's very talented and can work at a low price. And that's really, really hard to do. Not impossible, so but just hard to do. Because if they're good, then they're going to know their value and then they're going to charge what they're actually worth. Um, so then you, you as the agency owner who just bought into this agency in a box a course, you're learning how to build an agency, but at the same time, you're learning how to do it the wrong way because, you know, the freelancers are not going to, good freelancers are probably not going to want to um, stick around unless they're getting paid a fair wage. And on top of that, something else that this agency in a box, uh, you know, gurus teach too is like charge high ticket, right? So, higher ticket. So probably in like the 2000s to $5,000 a month retainer fee, mm. um, just so that you can, you know, uh, get profit and then, you know, uh, be able to outsource some of this work to good freelancers. Uh, but the challenge is how can you get a business owner to pay you two to $5,000 if you don't really have any real world experience. Yeah. So that's that's kind of where there's a really big disconnect, especially if you you haven't done cold calling or cold emailing, which is another thing that they teach, which between you and me, we both know that these tactics work. They just take time. Um, but yeah, so that that's also another challenge too. Um, you know, that with with what these gurus are teaching. Yeah. Also I think one of the hidden dangers of running an agency in general is that it's very HR intensive, um, human resource intensive. And what I mean by that is you make you actually make the most money when you're on your own as a freelancer or yeah. maybe as a freelancer with a couple of contractors. That's when you make the most money. The moment you try to scale beyond yourself and a couple of people, um, it starts to actually eat into your profits. I know- A lot. And, and it's, it's a balance for everyone. Like some people may be happy running an agency with two employees and multiple contractors. Others may be happy with 10 employees and multiple contractors. But from the few agency owners I know who've scaled successfully, and I define success as um, having a couple dozen employees, they almost always got burnt out and they actually sold their agency or they fired a lot of people just to scale down because they realize that they're now in this sort of, cycle where they actually have to manage people rather than doing the actual work. And some exactly. of the agency owners I know just like doing the actual work. They love marketing. They like doing the work. Not a lot of people are built with the mentality of having to lead people and managing day-to-day -day operations. Yeah. And that's actually me. For me, I've built my agency around a lifestyle and definitely not around trying to be the most uh, you know, drop, you know, in terms of driving the most revenue as much as possible with, with the biggest team. Um, so is, is that the case for you as well? Yeah, it's the case with me. I, I'm, I've always told every new client who's come on board with me is that I run small shop and I say that with, I, I tell that, I tell them that with intention, um, because, um, I, you know, I want them to know that as a small shop, I'm very agile. I mean, not necessarily bring, sort of bigger or the resources that bigger agencies owners have. But I think that's okay as long as I'm working or if I'm staying within my lane, I know who I'm working with. Um, yeah. So I, I think there's good and bad to being a small shop as well as there's good and bad to being a big shop. It's just knowing who, who you want to work with and how you want to grow. Um, I think the other pitfall that a lot of people who try to run an agency don't understand is um, you need good client interfacing skills. And if you oh, never yeah. <laughs> if you never run a business before, um you're you're in for some really hard lessons to learn because 
you know, a lot of these gurus, they can teach you, oh, well, here's how to run Facebook ads for chiropractors. You know, here's how to do it. Here's how to set everything the up. The technical skills. The, the technical hard technical skills. skills. But what yeah. happens when something goes wrong or what happens when your client um, throws a fit? You know, how do you deal with that? And stuff like that can only be learned like in the moment by being agile, by being, by having good people skills and learning to manage expectations. Well, and through experience. Yeah. Yeah, I totally agree. Um, like where I was when I first started my business versus where I am now, it's totally different, you know, Dean. Um, so I, I think you need good client interfacing skills. I've always prided myself on my ability to manage the expectations of my clients and um, interface with them in a way that they feel comfortable with me. Um, but that's something you kind of have to learn as you move along. And not, ever, not everyone has that skill set when they first start out. Yeah. Can I share a personal anecdote? Like when I started my business, I I had the skill set of Google ads. Prior to this business, I had been doing Google ads full time for agencies. I worked on Toyota, AMPM Arco, Sage Accounting Software, a lot of big names on multi-million dollar brands. When I started this business and then I started, you know, following some of these gurus. I was actually like taken aback by, you know, what they were promoting and how much, you know, how much money they say that they were making. But then in the back of my mind, I was like reminding myself, you cannot just believe that everything that you see is real. Like they're trying to paint a picture at the end of the day, they're trying to sell course. Um, but it really kind of painted some doubt because here I am, I'm like, you know, just barely starting my business, just barely even, you know, making enough to, you know, just get by. And, and I have all this experience working in Google ads and generating leads. And here are these gurus that, you know, they, they don't actually have that real world experience. Um, and they're quote unquote, claiming that they're making all this, all this money. And then I end up finding out that a lot of these people, they're just, you know, making up stuff like, oh, I sold a $15,000 client. Well, it's because they sold a client for $1,500 a month, but we don't know how long they're going to stay. That's under the assumption they're going to stay for 10 months, right? So we don't know what their churn is. We don't know, um, you know, a lot of these things. So there a lot of them, they're just there or they'll claim like that they have revenue, but then it's not actually cash collected. It's like something that they sold and someone agreed to, but it's not actual like money coming in. So a lot of these people, they do stretch the truth. Um, and over time, I'm starting to realize like, yeah, this is, this is really fake and really yeah. a lot of like BS. <laughs> um, what else do you want to talk about? Um, let's talk about, um, let's see. So let's, uh, let's talk about how to spot a social media, like, uh, marketer from, you know, that has come from these courses as a small business owner. We do have a lot of local small business owners that listen and watch this podcast. So let's talk about some red flags to look out for. If you're a small business owner and someone reaches out with an amazing offer, um, what, uh, what are some things that you would look for to kind of identify someone that's gone through these courses? Um, so I think the first one is usually they'll code email you with su a subject line, like quick question. Um, but does that mean like every agency who does that, they came from these courses? No. Nope. Um, another thing too is cold calling. Um, but then again, just because someone is cold calling doesn't mean that they came from these courses either. Typically these are, you know, younger, uh, people in their twenties, um, coming at you with some type of amazing offer. Dude, I just got an e a couple emails today. I get a bunch of these emails all the time and they're not necessarily from social media marketers, but they're from, you know, other types of marketers saying stuff like, Oh, if we, if we don't perform, you don't pay. And I think it's just a bunch of like, I think it's just a bunch of BS too. So I, mean, I just, you know, end up deleting it. But any, anytime you see some type of like really strong guarantee where it's like, oh, performance or you don't pay or we'll pay you or we'll pay for your, 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 uh, your lease for a month, like something really random hmm. or we'll buy you like a, an iWatch or yeah. iPhone if we can't perform. <laughs> I've seen those by the way. 
Um, what, what what do you think is the catch is with those gimmicks? Like, is there what, what's the catch? What do you mean? So, for example, if they if they say money back guarantee, like, what what's the fine print? Oh, the fine print is probably something along the lines of, oh, you have to stick with us for at least, you know, a certain amount of time. You have to make sure that you're like following up with your leads, oh, okay. um, that type of thing. Um, and that's the thing. They, they say these things, but we don't really know what that fine print is until you actually move forward yeah. and, <laughs> and actually have those conversations. But whenever I see those now, I get really, uh, I get really nervous and <laughs> just, you know, just delete it. Yeah. I mean, um, one, one thing I would say is like, uh, just because someone's code emailing you doesn't necessarily mean they, you know, they, they took a course, um, code emailing or code calling, usually code emailing. Um, it's a pretty common approach by a lot of agencies, not just it new, is. but established. Um, it's actually something I did a few years ago on LinkedIn where anyone who has a LinkedIn account, you're probably familiar with all the spam nowadays. But um, I used to do it when it wasn't very spammy, where I would DM my target demographic, yeah. um, you know, introduce myself and then drip it out over several emails. And it actually worked pretty well. Um, but the reason why I stopped doing it was because for me, it felt like with code email, I had to make a much more concerted effort to try and sell myself to them than had they come to me. Like had they come to me, they're actually, they usually psychologically from a sales perspective, they generally have to pre sold. Pre, yeah. You have to pre qualify themselves a little bit harder or I have to qualify them. But when I'm coming to them, they have more leverage than I have over them. So now I'm trying to like sell myself really well over, over the initial concept. I'm not really good at that uh, methodology. So that's why eventually I gave it up just because it just mm. requires too much time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's really a chase when you're, when you're going after, when you uh, use the cold methods. And then on top of that, you're not really building any brand equity versus if you're doing content marketing, you're building brand equity. Content takes a lot of time. Um, um, so, you know, it's just a matter of like, would you rather trade your time, have your time spent on content or would you rather spend it, spending it, try to sell to cold or, uh, cold leads, um, you know, through cold email or, or on the phone. So yeah, I, I fully agree with you that just because someone comes in through cold email, Hey, I've used cold email. But I've had really great success with it. It's just not the way that I want to really spend my time in my business to get clients. I would rather have people come to me pre-positioned to buy. Yeah. Um, so just like you, um, so inbound leads are, are gold, but I understand too, you know, with any type of business development, you probably should have both because that's what's going to help you have, you know, multiple like, like legs to stand on uh, instead of just one. And, you know, because if you're only relying on content, let's say something happens to, you know, your YouTube channel, knock on wood, or, you know, something happens to your SEO, and then you're, you're out of luck because you're not getting as much traffic. So that's why a lot of companies will do multiple things. But usually when these quote unquote gurus, uh, uh, people that go through these courses, they start, they start out using cold email because it's a very low barrier to entry. You just get a bunch of emails and start cold blasting. But just because someone's using it is not necessarily, you know, a bad thing. It doesn't mean that they're a bad, you know, person that does, doesn't yeah, know yeah. what they're doing. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. I, one thing I did want to say is in this video is this video was not meant or podcast was not meant to spread hate, but it was more of just like creating awareness of this whole social media agency in a box um, approach that's really being promoted right now. A couple years ago, it was drop shipping and then like it still NFTs. Is, by the way. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. So, drop, drop shipping is still a thing. It's just done on TikTok. Yeah, exactly. So then, and then now it's SMMA because they're, they're they're trying they're targeting that same that same group of people like in their early twenties, but now they're just showing oh here's some easy ways to go about you know making making an extra buck or to to have a life of freedom and they're promoting um, and a lot of them they're using a lot of like motivational like regurgitation recycling the same content over and over and over again to try to get these people in. So hopefully this video and this content was super helpful to 
number one, expose you to some, you know, uh, what to look out for if you are looking to buy an SMMA course or if you are um, a business owner being approached by these types of people, like how to how to spot them and how to know what's BS and what's not. And yeah, if you have any questions, you can drop them in the comments of this video below. But did you have anything else, Dean, to add to this topic? Yeah, um, I think the only thing I would add is like, if you really want, if you really want to get into running an agency, number one, start small, just with yourself and just go out there and freelance. Because through freelancing, you start to understand more of yourself as a business mm -hmm. person now, because you're, you're now a business person or a business owner. You start mm -hmm. to understand what you like or what you dislike. Like you may love doing the actual work, but you may hate selling. And through that uh, realization, you can start to find ways to kind of cover up your weaknesses. So maybe you have to find a partner or someone who can work on commission if you hate doing sales. So I, I would say if you want to run an agency, like just start freelancing on your own first before you start to take up any course. And after you've been freelancing for a while, start looking at some legitimate courses. And, and see what they can do for you. I don't think there's, I think the real value in some of these masterminds or these courses is really the networking you get from yeah. other agency owners and learning from their mistakes and their wins as well. Um, yeah. I, I truly believe, especially in the age of the internet where you can learn everything off of YouTube, if you're just like learning to run Facebook ads or run Google ads, you can just go to YouTube for that. Uh, mm -hmm. Complement it with just um, making mistakes with clients that's how you get good at it. Exactly. But it's really ever uh, an overnight thing. Yeah, it's never an overnight thing. It takes years in order to get to, you know, the level that you want, uh, that level of even like six, seven figures, if you don't have any prior experience. So don't think that, oh, just because you went to high school and college, and then you just be able without any real world experience, you'd be able to get anywhere. Because <laughs> It's it's definitely not an easy and straight path. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you guys so much for tuning in and we'll see you in the next episode. Bye.